natural resources and their use is a new chapter of uh, social science for class 8 standard so today we are going to cover the short question answers the multiple choice question answer for the chapter is already covered so if you want you can check that one also and today we are going to cover some important short question answer from the chapter okay so let us start so the first question is what is natural resources so resources that are drawn from nature and used without much modification are called natural resources for example the air we breathe the water in our rivers and lakes okay so that is the resources that are drawn from the nature and we human beings are using it without much modification are natural resources next when does nature become a resource nature becomes a resource when it is useful to human and has value for example a river is a part of nature but when we use it for drinking water irrigation transportation or hydroelectricity it becomes a resource okay so when nature become a resource when it is useful to human and has value right next how natural resources are categorized so natural resources are categorized on the basis of uses this can be grouped into essential for life resources for material and resources for energy okay so i have just tried to little bit elaborate this one so this can be grouped into essential for our life that is life supporting resources resources for material that is natural resources that provide physical substance used to make goods build infrastructure or manufacture tools and resources for energy that is these natural resources used to generate energy in various form that is heat light electricity or mechanical power okay so in this way natural resources are categorized in three ways where the essential for our life resources for materials and resources for energy okay next question so the next question is what are the resources essential for life these are the resources that are absolutely necessary for the survival of living beings for example air water soil sunlight and basic minerals are considered natural resources essential for life without them life on earth would not be possible right next what are the resources for materials resources for material are natural resources that provide raw substances used to build manufacture or produce goods example it include minerals for metal forest for wood and soil for bricks or farming it means the natural resources that provide raw substances to build or manufacture or produce goods are known as resources for material right next what are resources for energy so natural resources for energy are materials or substance found in nature that can be used to produce energy these resources can be renewable or non renewable right so these are the categories of the natural resources that is resources essential for life and then resources for materials and resources for energy now let us proceed to the next question that is question number 7 why natural resources are categorized whether they are renewable or not so natural resources are categorized whether they are renewable or not to reflect their availability over time and how they can be used sustainably this classification helps people to understand how their use of these resources affects the environment and future generation okay so in this way natural resources are categorized into whether they are renewable or non renewable now define the term restoration so restoration is the process of repairing rebuilding or revitalizing damaged or degraded ecosystem to bring them back to their natural state or a healthy functioning condition okay so this restoration has been just defined in terms of the context that is given in the chapter 
Next, what are renewable resources? So these are the resources that can be replenished naturally within a human lifespan. Example, solar energy, wind, water, forest, if managed, forest, okay, if managed properly, and crops. If these resources are used responsibly, they won't run out. The focus is on sustainable management to avoid depletion. That is, the example is deforestation is faster than regrowth. So renewable resources can be replenished naturally within a human lifespan, okay? For example, solar energy, wind, and the water. So if these res uh, resources are used as responsibly, then they won't run out, and uh, the focus would be on sustainable management to avoid depletion, okay? So this is renewable resources. Now, when a resource remains renewable, for a resource to remain renewable, it must be used and managed sustainably. It is not consumed faster than it can be naturally regenerated or replenished. Okay, so a source to remain renewable, it must be used and managed sustainably. Right? Next, what are the conditions for energy to remain renewable? Sustainable use, minimal environmental impact, protection from pollution or degradation climate and environmental stability, okay? In this also, you can just elaborate the point and answer or simply write also because since it is a short answer question or you can write, a renewable energy source stay renewable only if it is used wisely, managed carefully and not over exploited or damaged by human activity, okay? This can also be written down. Next, what are non-renewable resources? Non-renewable resources are natural assets such as coal, petroleum, and natural gas that are available in limited quantities and cannot be regenerated within human lifespan. Once consumed, they are depleted and take thousands or millions of years to form again. Okay, so this is the definition of non-renewable resources. Next, as the chapter and topics are there in the uh, textbook, in the same manner, the short answer questions are also prepared, okay? So next question is, how river water become poisonous? So river water become poisonous when harmful substances like industrial effluents, sewage, agricultural chemicals, and solid waste enter it. These pollutants degrade water quality, deplete oxygen, harm aquatic life, and make the water unsafe. Next question. How we can restore polluted rivers? For regeneration, natural processes such as microbial decomposition, sedimentation, and dilution help over time. However, human interventions like setting up of treatment plants, enforcing pollution, control laws, managing watershed, promoting sustainable agriculture, and creating community awareness are essential to restore polluted rivers. So in this way also we can restore polluted rivers. Next, how natural resources are distributed across our planet? Natural resources are unevenly distributed across the planet due to differences in climate, geology, landform, and human development. Some regions are rich in minerals and fossil fuels, while others have fertile soil, forest, or abundant water. This unequal distribution affects the economy development and trade between countries. Okay, so in this way, the natural resources are distributed across our planet, where somewhere some regions are rich in minerals and fossil fuels, while some have fertile soil, forest, or abundant water. Now, next. Why natural resources can become the cause of conflict? Natural resources often became the cause of conflict as they are limited and unevenly distributed while the demand for them is high. Sometimes when people or groups compete for them or when their use harms the environment and displaces them, it also became the cause of conflict. So for this reason, People used to conflict over natural resources. Next, what is Kaveri water dispute? As it is mentioned in the chapter also, let us see. So the Kaveri river water dispute is between the Indian states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu over sharing river 
water that is river kaveri tamil nadu has historically received more water but karnataka wants a larger share for its growing needs the dispute worsened during drought the supreme court and the kaveri water management authority have been involved to ensure fair distribution of water okay so this is the dispute over the water that is river kaveri and between karnataka and tamil nadu okay next question number 18 what is natural resource curse the natural resource curse is when a country has a lot of natural resources but instead of becoming rich and developed it faces poverty corruption and conflict this happens because resources are misused fought over or not shared fairly so this is natural resource curse next how we can responsibly and wisely use natural resources we can use natural resources responsibly and wisely by conserving energy and water reducing waste through reuse and recycling protecting ecosystems using renewable resources and making mindful choice to minimize pollution and over consumption so in this way we can wisely use natural resources okay so let us proceed to question number 20 what is over exploitation of ground water and how how has it affected punjab okay so over exploitation of ground water means using more water from underground sources than is naturally replenished in punjab farmer use a lot of ground water for irrigation because of this the water table has gone down drastically causing water scarcity and problem like reduce water availability for drinking and farming okay so this is the over exploitation of ground water a castle that has been shared in the chapter from the panja next how does the cement industry impact the environment the cement industry causes air pollution by releasing dust and harmful gases it also leads to the destruction of natural landscape due to quarrying of limestone and other materials okay next what step has sikkim taken to protect its natural resources sikkim has promoted organic farming restricted deforestation and encouraged the use of clean energy now what is clean energy that is produced from natural sources without polluting the environment example solar energy biogas that is from organic waste okay to protect its natural resources and environment basically Sikkim has promoted organic farming, restricted deforestation, and encouraged the use of clean energy to protect its natural resources and environment. Okay. Next, how can we use natural resources in a responsible and judicious way? We need to make the switch to renewable sources of energy for as many purposes as we can. Also, by reducing wastage. reusing and recycling saving water protecting forest and spreading awareness so in this way we can use natural resources in a responsible and judicious way right so next question that is 24 what is the international solar alliance that is isa So the International Solar Alliance is an organization of countries that work together to promote the use of solar energy instead of fossil fuels. As solar energy is clean and renewable, it does not cause pollution or global warming. Okay? So it is an organization of the country that work together to promote the use of solar energy. How can we act as a steward that is a caretaker of natural resources toward restoration regeneration and sustainability Now here we can act as steward of natural resources by helping to repair damaged ecosystem by planting trees and cleaning river that is restoration allowing nature to renew itself by reducing overuse and giving it time to recover that is regeneration and using resources wisely so that future generation can also use them this include saving water using clean energy recycling and avoiding pollution that is sustainability okay so in this way natural resources 
can be used as restoration, regeneration, and for sustainable purpose. So here I have covered important 25 question answer from the topic that is the natural resources and their use. I hope this short answer question is going to help you while going through the chapter also. Multiple choice question answer has already been covered. If you want, you can check that one also. And this much for this video. Thank you for watching until the end.